Hey, hello, ho, ho, and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Promotion. Because today we are going to take a look at advanced compositing in 3D space. You heard it. Today it's all about the 3D space in After Effects. Oh, stop. One moment. Yeah, 3D is great and we will get there. No worries. But I will show you how to do it in 2D. And then we jump to all the benefits of Tuna House D. And yes, 3D will be the grand finale. So stick around for that. Hey, you will learn something you didn't knew before. Promised. You know, it's holiday season and everyone has some time to learn something new. So I thought I could also give you a present and give you an overview, spiced up with a lot of tips and tricks and workflows. So for that I have several assets. A background layer, which is, well, simply a video. Next is center slay again, just a 2D image. And then we have me sitting in there. And I filmed that in front of a green screen, trying to match lights as good as possible. So that means I had to went outside on an overcast day. And as it is pretty cold these days in Germany, I could use that for my method acting. And I only used one light as the light source of the moon and also switched its light temperature to be cold. So no lights to lighten up the green screen, just what mother nature <laughs> gives us. So next in line are the reindeers. And it's actually just one that I copied a few times and offset it, the timing as well as the speed of the clip. So they do not look like a reindeer army. Did I mention that they are also not 3D at all? They are just 2D video files. And we get to the 3D part later. And by the way, all the assets from today's video are from Envato. So check it out. They have really cool stuff and I use it all the time. Hey, if you want to follow along, you could use my link in the description and also save some money. Hey, and to keep punk rock alive, I'm not sponsored by them. I only talk about stuff that I like. <laughs> so what I don't like is that we almost reached the end of what's possible with a 2D animation here. Well, without going into keyframes and cheating nightmares. But okay, it's a flat scene. Well, as it's only two dimensional, but Yes, we could still animate this a little bit. So let's create a null object and parent everything to it. Now we can create a zoom, some position keyframes, hey, and maybe even a wiggle. And well, we are still pretty far away from a masterpiece. Hmm. So what can we do? Let's add half of a D to this. So we are now at 2.5 D. So what does that even mean? Hmm. That means that we have assets that don't have any dimensions as they are 2D, but we can add them in 3D space. So a mixture of 2D and 3D. So how do we do that? Hmm. We simply click on the 3D switch for each layer. And a good way to show this is when we use two views over here. And maybe we use a custom view for now. And when we hit P for position, we now have X and Y as we are used to, but also Z, which is our depth. So let's have our main asset at position zero and push the background, well, back. And we can also position the other assets now. Okay, looks almost like our 2D version. What's the benefit of this? Hmm. Two main things. First, we can create a camera and get some parallax going. Para, uh, para what? Yeah, that simply means that two objects behind each other change position to each other depending from where you view them. So in a 2D solution, this looks like uh, this. No parallax at all. Both reindeers stay at the same position to each other. Hmm. But when we are in 2.5 or 3D space and do the same move with the camera, now we get some parallax and therefore a sense of depth. So let's click on layer, new, camera. Hey, and here you can choose which camera you want to use. And sometimes it really makes sense to mimic the camera and lens you used for the shooting. But indeed, that is totally up to you. <laughs> I would probably shoot this a little wider. So I go with a 28 millimeter lens. And you can also check out some presets here. Hey, and I bet you did not know that you can also set your f-stop here. Okay, now you can also use the C key to navigate with your camera in combination with clicking and dragging. So 
Click C once for orbiting, twice for dollying, and three times for zooming. Hey, and depending on where you click with your mouth, you get different center points. For example, for the zooming. Zooming? No. We are actually not zooming. We are moving the camera back and forth in 3D space. Yes, that's a difference. If you zoom in and out an image, it looks as if you're simply scaling up the image, but nothing in the perspective really changes. But a fun thing you could do here or with your real camera in the real world, zoom in and out on an object and move closer or further away so that the object always has the same size, even though you are moving. And this effect is called vertigo effect. Hey, it looks super freaky. So now we really have a lot of options to animate this shot. And this already looks way better than our 2D version. But as for a real camera, we can add depth of field to this. Simply turn it on here and bring up the blur and aperture amount. And with the focus distance, you define what is in focus and what's not. Hey, and two super cool tricks for this. If you select a layer, maybe myself here, and the camera and go to layer, camera, link focus distance to layer. Now they are linked via an expression. And whatever you are doing, your hero will stay in focus. Cool. And hey, the second trick for that, simply create a null object, make it 3D and call it focus or whatever you want. Now, link that to the camera focus point. In the same way, choose the top view now. And I can now very easily create a rack focus effect. Let's place the null object, for example, on this first reindeer. Set a keyframe and now push it to our hero. Yeah, you get it. You can drive the focus with the null object. But hey, that's not all. We can also add lights to this. And there are a few different types, point, spot, and parallel. Hey, and with the ambient light, you can brighten up your whole scene. Okay, now let's add the last half D to this to finally reach three Ds. Okay, because you may have realized that this two and a half D solution has its limitations. And it only works until we see that our illusion is just an illusion. But therefore, you can now natively import 3D assets. Just be aware that you have the beta version of After Effects installed. So let's import this GLTF file and voila! It is in our comp now and I can simply position myself and hey, you directly see that this interacts in true 3D space. <laughs> awesome! So I can create way more advanced camera moves. And while we are at handy tips. Here's another one just for you. If you click on draft, you will get faster draft rendering. And you can also enable a grid here so you get a better understanding of your 3D space, as well as a framing button, which allows you to see what is actually outside of your viewing area. And both of them just make working in 3D space so much easier. Hey, and before I let you go, there's just one last tip that I want to show you. So let's say I move around this sleigh here quite a lot with my camera. So the sleigh looks nice, but yeah, you can definitely see that the footage is only two dimensional when we go too extreme here. So what we can do now is to right click on the footage, go to transform and auto orient and select orient towards camera. In that way, you can cheat this as you always see yourself from the front, but it still moves in 3D space. And in the same way, I have created the deers running in my video as they run in a curve, but always look to the camera. So what do you think? 2, 2.5 or 3D? Which one is better? Do you have questions about this topic? Let me know in the comments down below and I will answer all of them. Promised. And for now, I wish you a lot of... Um, Lexing holidays. <laughs>